hey, how do you know we can trust the Bible? How do you know the Bible is true? So that is a deep and scholarly question. So I do appreciate the depth of that. And I've been diving headlong into research so that I can train the thousands of you out there, hundreds of thousands of you out there who really want to know, how do you know the Bible is true? And why do you personally trust the Bible? And I have, I have trusted the Bible. Everyone on our team has trusted the Bible since day one of their faith journey. And I want to explain to you why. So this is part one in a five part a series called Why You Can Trust the Bible. And today's is really simple. This is simply what the Bible says about the Bible. So I want to go through uh, and talk to you about what the Bible says about the Bible. So I want to start with this. So I want to talk about the Bible and its call for us as men to teach our children. So in Deuteronomy, early, early, early in the scriptures, Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through nine says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You might realize this is the greatest commandment that Jesus mentioned in Mark chapter 12, I think. He continues, these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and talk to them when they sit in your house and when you walk on, on by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. That's a pretty strong admonition by God to teach our children the word of God. Here are some benefits from knowing the word of God. And this is in Psalm 119. And I'm going to say something. If you're a single guy, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in all of the Bible. It's the longest Psalm of all of the Psalms. And I would encourage you young guys, you really need to lock in on this Psalm. This Psalm really is about the Bible. It's an alphabetical acrostic. In other words, uh, it starts off with the, the subtitle is Aleph. And then the next subtitle is Bet. And then Gimel, Dalet, Hey. These are all letters in the Hebrew alphabet, right? So as you read it, it's an alphabetic acrostic. So there, there you get a free Hebrew lesson there. So let's look at Psalm 119 verses 9 through 16. Listen to what the Bible tells us about the Bible. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all your heart, I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have told all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 42. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your ordinances. So I will keep your law continually forever and ever. Let's skip down to verse 100. I understand more than the age because I have observed your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not turned aside from your ordinances for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. From your precepts, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and will confirm it that I will keep your righteous commandments. I mean, isn't that rich and beautiful? And the Bible is telling us some wonderful things about itself right there. In Matthew 4.4, 4, it says this, but he answered and said, he's answering to Satan, by the way, this is Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. This is uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, after Jesus had ate nothing for 40 days. Satan tempts him with three things, and here's one of Jesus' responses. In fact, all three of Jesus' responses, he responds with um, the deceptions of Satan, the small incongruities that Satan offers about the Bible. Jesus responds with biblical truth, and he says this, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of your mouth, O God. Talking about the Bible. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus said, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. So now what does the Bible say about studying the Bible? Besides all that I've already listed, 
In Ephesians chapter 6, 17, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the Word of God is our sword. It's our weapon. It's how we defend the faith. It's how we defend uh, false doctrine. It's how do we defend uh, s- small lies that try to creep into our lives and try to creep into our church. In 2 Timothy 2.15, as Paul's writing to his protege, Timothy, who, by the way, is the pastor of Ephesus, was the biggest church uh, in its day. He said this, be diligent to present yourself to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of God. And that that word there, uh, to accurately handle in the Greek, it literally means to cut something straight or to to saw in a straight line. So to, to have the ability to understand the right way that the Bible is teaching and the right direction that the Bible is leading us. So here's probably what you've been waiting for, though, because when people ask me how and why I trust the Bible, what they're really saying is, you know, this book seems to be written by a bunch of guys uh, or or women, and it's, you know, and uh, there's discrepancy and all this stuff. You know, this is written by man, not God. And I would wholeheartedly, uh, aggressively, adamantly disagree, vehemently disagree. I believe that the, that God, yes, used people to come together over the course of hundreds and hundreds of years to bring something together that has been read more than any other document, produced more than any other document, trusted more than any other document, has more historical verification than any other document. These are all things we're going to go through uh, later on in this series. But for now, what does the Bible say about the inspiration of the Bible being from God? That this this document, these 27 books of the New Testament, these six, 39 books of the Old Testament, these 66 books that make up the entire Bible, how do we know that all of these come together in one bound library that we call God's inspired holy word? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, here's what we read. And that from childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Listen to this. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Did you hear that? The word of God is inspired. All of the word of God is inspired. How about 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23? Peter writes, For you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is, through the living and enduring word of God. You hear that? The word of God is living. It is living. I was reading this morning in Tim, uh, Titus Chapter one, verse three, it talks about God's timing. And I had an insight that I'd never had in the dozens and dozens of times I'd read that passage. Why? Because the word of God is living. Hebrews 4.12, in fact, says this, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. How about 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21? But we know, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Why? For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Wow, that is amazing. And at the very end of the Bible, just two chapters, three chapters before the end of the Bible, in Revelation chapter 19, Verses 12 through 14, listen to this. This is what a word picture of the word of God. His eyes are talking about Jesus in the second coming. His eyes are a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written on him, which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood. His name is called the word of God. And the armies which are in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, we're following him. Now listen to this. The Jesus name in Revelation is the word of God. So what does that mean? That means that the word of God, everything about the word of God points to one thing, Jesus. That's what it's all about. So man, I so what does the Bible say about the Bible? I would say a lot. I just pulled a few passages that I knew by memory out of there to give to you in our short 10-minute equipping episode. 
But man, dive headlong into the Bible and see what the Bible says about the Bible. Next week, you're going to learn something really, really important about why we can trust the Bible even more so. Make sure you head on over to meninarena.org. Grab your free copy of my book, Tell Them What Great Fathers Tell Their Sons and Daughters. And guys, while you're there, make sure you sign up to join uh, our program. Click the Join Our Program button. It puts you into one of our uh, uh, national teams with one of our many na uh, national team captains. These are amazing groups. We're getting life-changing stories out of these groups on a regular basis, guys. Until next time, feel the wet sound on the arena floor. Hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out. Trust the Bible with your life and be a man.